And so I did the Tonight Show with Jonathan, met him. Uh, there's some great stories in there that when I do write the book, they will come out because Jonathan's an interesting character in my book. Uh, but anyway, we did the Tonight Show. Merv Griffin saw that show and called my publisher in New York and asked him to call me and ask if I would stay over for a week and do his show. So I stayed over and I did his show as a singer. Sang on his show. At the end of the show, I stayed on the couch the entire show with Billy Crystal. I think it was one of his first shows. And at the end of the show, Merv came over and he said, uh, can I speak with you for a minute? I said, sure. He said, uh, I'd like to uh, go into my office back here and uh, talk to some men who run my company. Um, I, I have a plan for you. I <laughs> said, okay. So, so we left, went back to his office, and just as we got to the office door, this is what he said to me, and this is what I thought. He said, did you ever consider being a game show host? And this is exactly what went through my head. I didn't say this, but this is the, what went through my head. A game show host. That would be a guy with a bad mustache, an equally bad jacket that cares nothing about what you have to say. <laughs> and that's what I thought a game show was. Because it's kind of who they were back then. And uh, so I said, no, uh, Mr. Griffin, I hadn't, really, I hadn't really thought about that. He said, well, you should, you should consider that. So they came in and talked to me about doing a show which was called Shopper's Bazaar and wanted me to stay over another week and run it for NBC. So I worked on it all week, ran it for NBC. NBC said, we love you, hate the show. Uh, I was still living in Nashville. I uh, went back home a year later. I had moved to L.A. and I'd done Mr. Dingle and all that kind of stuff. They got back in touch with me and said, uh, Shopper's Bazaar has now morphed into Wheel of Fortune and we don't like the guy that did the pilot. We like you. Would you come in and do 13 weeks? And I said, no. And I was stupid. <laughs> I was just hit with a stupid stick. And I said, no. And a couple of uh, very important guys in Los Angeles got me in a corner at a party one night. And they said, you're stupid. Don't do this. Everybody's clamoring to get a job. And that's 13 weeks on network. It's very important. And I just acquiesced and took the job. And they gave me a career. Six so God was looking out after me. I didn't have sense enough to look out, <laughs> out after myself. So, uh, yeah. Six years with Will of Fortune. Seven. Seven. Yeah, it was on seven, seven years. Seven years. So that's uh, quite a long time. But you left. And well, we couldn't make it. Merv was, uh, Merv and I had a problem. And the problem was he wanted me to do what he wanted me to do, and I just didn't want to do that. And uh, he didn't want to pay you anything. So when I came up for for renewal, I asked for $10,000 a week, which sounds like a lot of money, but it's, it was parody with what was going on in the market. He wanted to pay me seven. And so we just can't, we were just at loggerheads. We couldn't. Uh, NBC finally said, "Look, this is stupid. We'll pay the other three thousand a week." And Merv said, "No, if you pay him the three thousand dollars a week, I will move to CBS." And so he he was really out for me. He didn't like me. Hmm. And uh, so that was the end of our relationship on Wheel. I sat around for six months and got Love Connection, which lasted twelve years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you know, and did Scrabble uh, concurrently with that on NBC. So I was doing. I did Wheel, Scrabble, and, and Love Connection at the same time. So I had, one, I had a network show and a syndicated show, and then went on to uh, Data Game and Greed on Fox and Lingo on Game Show Network. So I've had six hits, and most guys, they're lucky to have one. Wheel went on to become a, a huge well, smash. Yeah. Do you ever say to yourself, maybe I should have stuck it out and see how things would No, no, out? no. There's a, there's a whole story that I won't get into because it's very, very, very long and kind of convoluted, but... Uh, yeah, there, there was a certain arrogance on my part that I learned from, and that is not only is everybody replaceable, uh, it was the game that drove the show. And I didn't realize that there were two kinds of games. There's a host-driven game, and there's a game-driven game. And Wheel, is not taking any away from, anything away from Pat Sajak, but any competent uh, game show host could drive Wheel, and it would be just as successful. I was under the impression that I lent something to it that couldn't be replaced. I was wrong. Now, when it came to Love Connection, it was a host-driven show. So I drove that show, and there's the difference. You take me out of the equation of Love Connection, and it was a very difficult thing to replace. But on Wheel, or Scrabble, or, or uh, Pyramid, or uh, Family Feud, even Price is Right, even though you may get the wrong person in there, they're, they're, but because he's not a game show, I think Drew's the wrong guy for that show. But he's not a game show host. But if you put the proper game show host in there to drive the show, the show will carry itself. And I just, I didn't realize that. So, yeah, there were times that I thought, you know, I should have just taken what Griffin offered me and how it turned out. Because, quite frankly, Coca-Cola made, uh, made uh, Pat and Vanna rich. 
They really did. They uh, they they went over Merv's head and paid them millions of dollars, and Merv had nothing to do with it. They just gave it to him well, once they bought him out. Love Connection, an interesting show. I mean, it was one of those shows that when I watched it, just some of the personalities of the people that you had on just fascinated me because, quite honestly, they were pretty bizarre at times. But the one thing about it that I was thinking about before you came on the show was it was one of the extra, I guess if you want to call it the, the first reality type series shows. Yeah, a lot of people, people have said there. that. A lot of people have said that. It was, uh, it was a unique situation because it was, it was one of those things where you send somebody out on a date. Uh, with a girl, and uh, I always think of it in terms of that because I'm a guy. But anyway, you send them out on a date, and then they show up and find out what really happened. Because they, you know, each, each person had an impression of what went on on that first date. Oh, he really liked me. Hey, you didn't. No, he didn't like you at all. He thought you were this. <laughs> and it was like a truth session where the truth really meets uh, the opportunity of the date, and then both people find out what's really going on. So that's what it made it interesting. It was the first time that anyone had ever, and it wasn't brutal. I think the shows on today are kind of brutal. They they just take you off of the knees, and they're uh, they're not. I thought Love Connection was fun, and that's what I wanted to do was keep it fun, no matter how bad it went or how badly it went. Just people have a good time on the show. Well, there's a show I can't think of the name of it that was on uh, at night, and I don't even remember the network. I watched it a couple of times, where basically they had people tell the truth, and they'd ask them some really tough questions and embarrassing questions mm -hmm. about their life, and put them in some, some really tough spots. So I kind of see what you're saying. It, it's just getting harder and harder. Yeah, it's, it's very, it's it's crude and it's cruel, and it's like watching. It's truly like watching blood at a train wreck. And uh, I just like to watch the train wreck. I don't want to watch the blood and the bodies come off. And that's basically what you're doing. And it's, uh, I just think it's gotten brutal. But our, but our society's kind of gotten brutal too, so. Well, you look at the UFC stuff, that's mm -hmm. the ultimate fighting championship yeah, stuff. It's, it's, we're getting more and more brutal all the time. It's, it's an interesting phase of our lives to watch this. I mean, as Americans, I, I guess it depends on your age, how you reflect on this or how you look at it. But uh, the younger you are, the more accustomed you come to it, so you get more brutal. <laughs> Is it like Rome, where all of a sudden you start saying, oh, bring out the lions and let's eat them? Love Connection was extremely successful. Would it be as successful today as it was then, do you think? Yeah, because uh, at least I think so. Uh, you don't really know, but um, you know, certain things have their time, and then they go away. Uh, Love Connection, oddly enough, was really a comedy show. Uh, no one thought that it was going to be, but it was just kind of a funny show. Uh, so, yeah, I think there's always room for comedy uh, in television. So on that theory alone, I would say yes. Uh, a lot of shows, their time is up. You know, I mean, Laverne and Shirley's not going to come back. It's, it was to take place in the 50s, and it's not going to happen. And I, and I think they have reopened the Schlitz Brewery, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. That's <laughs> off from Milwaukee. <laughs> and I ought to know. <laughs> Our guest today, again on the front page, Chuck Woolery, a former Moorhead State student for about two and a half years. Of course, a very noted entertainer. He is on campus. He's here for the celebration of MSU Athletics. He's emceeing tonight at the dinner and auction, and he'll also be playing in the golf tournament tomorrow. I'm Chuck Moraz. We'll come back with more in just a moment.